Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to another Thursday morning Blitzy Live. We yes. do this every week. I have Claudia with me today. Morning, everyone. And it's March already. Can I you know. believe it? Can you believe it? It's March. <laughs> it is March already. It's crazy. So it is definitely flying by this year. It's just we insane. We got through Valentine's Day, and now the next crafting holiday, St. Patrick's Day. Yes. So I don't know if any of you craft for St. Patrick's Day. If you do or if you don't, you'll want to see this demo because we're going to be showing Color Burst, which right. is always a fan favorite. So you can use this product for so many different projects, but today we're going to do St. Patrick's Day. It's yeah. so close. And this, um, like you said, this project uh, can be adapted to any kind of occasion. It's just really more about the color burst technique and then kind of like the die cut technique. So. Yes. So everything that we're going to be showing, you'll be able to find at Blitzy. We will put a link in the comments. It should be the pinned comment in just a couple of minutes. That'll bring you to a blog post that has every product that we're going to be showing. So make sure you check out that blog post. And I guess we can just jump right into it. Yeah. I'm going to turn the comments on here. So if you have any questions, let us know. If you have crafty friends, share it on your page. The more the merrier. And let's do it. Yeah. You ready? So we're going to be making um, this little bouquet here, um, which is actually really, really simple to make. Um, but first, first step is using the color burst. And Color Burst um, is a pigment powder um, that is actually activated by water, so it's really um, multi-purpose, like versatile to, to have. Um, you can use it as a watercolor paint, you can use it to create kind of like a splatter colorful effect, which you're going to kind of see today. Um, and it comes in a variety of colors uh, by Ken Oliver, and they're all beautiful and vibrant and unique. And what's great about it is that um, Color Burst actually has as you'll see when I actually use it, they, it's a pigmented color, but it's got a little variation in color in there, so you get like really nice dimension and depth. Like it's not just a green, you know, it's a green with a little bit of red and blue, and it's really beautiful to see how it kind of changes when you um, activate it with water. I know people who see Color Burst for the first time, once you see it actually activate with the water, it's like, <gasps> it's so, like the what? reaction is always the same. It's like, unbelievable even if you have seen it it's because every it's time. different every time every it, time it's different yeah so I'd love to know I can see in the comments that some of you love color burst and you've used it already let us know if you're a newbie if you've never seen it just so we know who's here watching and maybe Ken Oliver will join us yeah. in the comments I don't know I know he sometimes tunes in um, so you'll see how uh, this little um, clover shamrock uh, shape um, is made up of four different die cut hearts and then a little stem here and a button on a dowel and it's really simple um, but let's start with the color burst like I said so you can see here how different these two sheets are that were sprayed with color burst this one is really dark and saturated we added a lot of color burst to this one and it's kind of like a deep deep emerald green this one we added a little less pigment, and this it's, one's like tie dye. It is. It's really it's cool. It's kind of like a, a watercolor tie dye wash. Um, this one, is, you can see the variation. It's lighter in some spots. I personally like this a little bit better than the more saturated one, just because I like to see the other colors kind of peek through there. Um, so I will show you how we do that. So once you have that, I I actually just saw in our um, private Facebook group. There was a post about color burst and someone was like, yeah, but then what do you do with it? And so something like that you could use as a card background. You can use it in an art journal. Mm -hmm. What are some other things? Um, well, there's some wonderful stencils um, also that Ken makes. And using that in conjunction with the uh, color burst, you can make some really great wall art. So it's great for home decor as well. But yes, for if you're a card maker, a scrapbooker, it makes beautiful backgrounds. Like we said, um, like we've said already, it's unique every time. Mm -hmm. So you're never you're never going to get two backgrounds that look the same, which is really cool. And you can also, as we've said, you can use them as like, kind of like a fine art supply. You can actually put some of this in a little palette with some water and actually use it as a watercolor. Yeah, mm -hmm. great. All right, let's see it in action. Okay, so. It's a very fine powder, and I'm just going to sprinkle it, and it's, what's great about actually seeing it be activated is that when you see it on the paper, you're like, that's kind of like a muddy brown, um, 
kind of like a rust color. Like, how is that green? You yeah. Know? <laughs> but then you, uh, the more you put on, the stronger the the color will be, the more uh, saturated. And I'm always surprised at how very little goes a long yes. way. So before she even sprays this, I don't know, I'm trying to see. Yeah, yeah you, you can, can kind of see, see it on there. But these areas right here are definitely going to be super concentrated. You're going to be amazed once you see this. So this is the sprinkle and spritz. You yes. sprinkle it down sprinkle and then you and spritz. spritz it with your water. Um, so then you'll see how as I spritz, There we go. As I spritz, you see how it becomes activated. Oh, Maureen made a Valentine banner, so oh, you nice. could do the same with, we're going to show you the bouquet, but you could also do a banner with what awesome. we're showing as well. Um, and so as you spritz, you can see how the colors start to kind of uh, mix together, the little, the shades. So this one is not very saturated, but you can always go back and add more if you want. And then there's kind of like three different techniques that you can do to actually dry this. Um, I know that one of Ken's favorite techniques is the paper towel dab. Yeah, so you can he takes the full. Yeah, <laughs> he takes the full roll of paper towels. Um, so you can take some paper towel and you can kind of like dab it and see what you get, and if you want more, you can add more color. You can also take a paintbrush and kind of swirl it around. Um, Megan actually was uh, the one who kind of came up with this cute little project, and she just used the heat gun. Uh -huh. So the heat gun, sorry, before I turn it on. The heat gun itself kind of pushes some of the water and the pigment around and, uh, as it dries it, so it creates a different kind of like pattern and look. So. So you can see how it kind of pushes some of that color around. And Maureen asked, are we using watercolor paper? Yes. Yes. We are using watercolor paper. It tends to be the best surface for doing these types of techniques with the water, with the color burst. Yep. Um, so as you can see, and Megan kind of told me this yesterday, that um, it's not as saturated as we would probably like because we want the, l the little um, leaves to be very, very green. Yeah. So. so you can actually, there, it's foolproof essentially. You can actually go back and put more color bursts. Like, I always remember Ken showing, sorry, this bottle's kind of. Um, I always remember. Ken actually has a new water bottle coming out. Oh, we'll have we, to get that We'll one. have to get that one. <laughs> um, there we go. Um, you, what was I saying? Sorry, I lost my train of thought for a second. I don't know. Ah. Um, oh, I always remember how Ken talks about how you can add color, you can add water, you can dab it and then dry it and then add more water and then add more color. So you can really kind of just mix it around and um, make it your own. So as I said, Megan dried it. So she can I just use one of yeah. the dry ones. We'll use one of the dry ones. Ooh, try not to get too much on the. I know we can dab it some, dab some of that off. So. And. I know we mention this a lot if you watch us often, but the mat that you see underneath here is actually the best ever craft mat, which is also a Ken Oliver product. It's a staple around here. Yes. We have two of them lined up together to cover more space, but there is a large version as well. So it's I think it's we're amazing. due to get a new one of those too. We yeah. Because <laughs> um, there's so many We need to put our uses. own Ken Oliver order in. Yes, we definitely do. Um, okay, so I'll just tuck this down here for now. So... Once it's completely dry, you can see, and even you, you can see how you definitely want to use watercolor paper because even here, it's kind of uh, warped a little bit just because it's how much water how was much sprayed water on it. was sprayed on this one. Um, because as you saw, like I wasn't very happy with how saturated it was, so we went back and added more color, more water, and it's going to make the paper kind of bulk, buckle a little bit. But Ken after is here. Yay! <laughs> hi, in the Ken. comments, he <laughs> says this looks so cool. <laughs> <clears throat> so after your paper is dry, um, you want to trim it down, or you can just cut it with scissors, um, so that it fits your die cut machine, whatever your whatever die cut machine you have. That's going to be our next step, I believe. Yes, and you can definitely uh, hand cut these if you don't have a die cut machine, but this is a very 
basic, um, if you're getting into crafting, if you're a card maker, this is an essential little handy dandy tool that helps you with so many different things. Um, the dies that we're using today are from Lawn Fawn, um, and it's actually a set of nested uh, yeah, hearts. Yeah, nested layered uh, hearts for layering. Um, and what's really cute is it has, I love Lawn Fawn because their, their dies have these cute little details. Like this one has some stitching on it. Um, that kind of just embosses as you die cut. So it's kind of like an emboss, it embosses and cuts at the same time. So that's what's cool about this. Um, and I believe this is all linked, correct? Yeah, once yeah. again, this is all linked on the pinned post on this broadcast. So if you want to see any of the products we're talking about, just go to that linked post at the top of all of the comments here. And if anyone, I just wanted to mention really quick, if anyone doesn't know Ken Oliver by any chance, you need to. He's the designer yes. of Color Burst and the craft mat we were talking about and so many other great products. So make sure you're following him on Facebook as well and on Instagram. Yeah, so we'll definitely we'll do another sponsor. live with kind of like his product line because he's got a great line of um, dyes and stamps that you can cut and color with the Color Burst and it's a lot of fun. So stay tuned because we'll probably feature that uh, sometime soon. Yes. Um, so you, okay, so what you want to do next is you place your paper in your die cut machine and then you're just going to place your die as you would normally. And you want to cut out four leaves. So I'm just going to roll this through. And if you're new, our machine's a little squeaky. <laughs> if you're new to die cutting, um, I remember when I first started, when you put a, a new die or a new plate in the machine, you hear like crack, crack. You hear like a cracking sound and you're like, oh my God, I broke it. Yeah. Um, but that's just, that's completely normal. <laughs> that's just kind of like the... It is. And your plates will get all... Yeah kind of scratched up here, that's normal too. That yeah. shows it's been loved, right? Yes. <laughs> it's just the, the metal and the plastic kind of like smashing together and kind of adjusting to one another. So um, definitely don't, I don't know if any of you have not tried die cutting yet. Don't be afraid if that happens. Um, so we just need four little leaves. And I did see while you're cutting those through, Maureen asked if you can use the color burst with stencils. That's actually my favorite yes. way to use color burst. You would just put your stencil down and then tap your colors over the stencil and then spray and then lift your stencil up and you'll have an amazing, amazing piece of artwork just it using is, your stencils. It's really easy and it's beautiful. It is definitely, um, we have some videos if you go on our uh, YouTube, um, or if you check it out on our website, um, there's definitely, it's definitely our favorite in the office kind of way to create instant art because it's so foolproof. Right. No matter what you end up with, it looks like you spent hours on it. Okay, so I got one more to cut and then we'll be all set. And this could be, this could also, this technique could also translate, like we, we're talking about St. Patrick's Day today, but you could also make a banner. Um, like, I'm um, sorry, was it Maureen that made a banner? I think Someone so. Oh, Valentine's Day banner? Yeah, so you can make this into a banner. This is just really uh, a unique technique because you don't, you can't really buy paper that looks like this, you know, because every time it's going to be something different. So that's what's cool about making decor or gifts or cards with color bursts is that every time you can even unique. do different colored hearts and kind of have like rainbow yeah. rainbow bouquets or just anything to match whatever party you're having so if you're having like a valentine's day party you could do red and pink if you're having a, a birthday party yeah if you you can do a baby shower you can do blue and pink and or yellow if it's <laughs> neutral so you can just totally customize this however you want so now you've got your four hearts. I love the stitching I know, accent it's, I on like these it dies. Too. It's really cute. It adds a little bit of dimension, so it's not just flat. Um, and I actually, so you can see here, this was one that Megan made, and then this is the one that we're making today. And you can see how it's so different. Um, yeah, so this one has a lot more kind of like water, mm -hmm, like like spl splatters. Yeah, yeah like that the, the word we're splatters. looking for. Um, so if you're the kind of person who wants to kind of have all your uh, leaves and shapes or whatever you're creating. If you want all your shapes to be uniform, um, it'd be a good idea to kind of create your color burst sheets first so that they all look the same. 
I mean, I don't really mind that it's different, but you know, if, if that's something that kind of, I know how some people can be perfectionists in that way or have right. an OCD about that. Um, it's kind of like a dye lot when you think like you buy yarn and you want to buy it all at once because then the color might be slightly different next time. Um, so you would want to do that. So now that you, now that we have the four leaves here, just take some uh, glue. Ken said it looks like dew drops on the shamrock. Oh, it does. It does. I always forget, and I know someone will call us out, but the difference between clover and shamrock. Do you know? Well, oh. <laughs> um, I always thought a shamrock is three leaves and a clover is four, but apparently a shamrock, I, I, I hear that now, like, Culturally, a four-leaf clover is known as St. Patrick's Day just as much as a shamrock, but I guess originally shamrocks were more St. Patrick's Day. I know there's um, there's something to that. I don't know, and I'm Irish, so. I <laughs> <do>. <laughs> um, but I know it'll come up. It, every year every it Every year it comes up. Every year, you know, I think we've just accepted that culturally four or three leaves are now recognized as a St. Patrick's Day symbol, but obviously to... Um, people who are traditional, there's definitely a correct, correct one. So Lori B is here. Hi, Lori. She uses um, color bursts for her Christmas cards. Oh, so. awesome. Okay, so, so you, you just glued them all in the center. You just glued to them make all the, the center. Look. And while that kind of sets, um, you just take some of the leftover um, paper that you have from your die cuts. It's and complicated. <laughs> <laughs> it is complicated. Um, and then you are just going to cut a little stem. So you can draw a stem if you, you know, on the back oop, and, uh, or trace a little shape and then cut it out. But I'm just going to freehand this. So you just cut I saw Megan is also in the comments. Hi Megan. Hi, Megan. She wasn't able to be here today, but she's home with those cutie patootie twins. That are almost one which is unbelievable. unbelievable. That time passed so fast. Um, okay, so you're just going to glue the little stem on. Same thing. And then for the button center, and it, we're using buttons, but you can do anything. You can do little pom-poms mm -hmm. in the center um, or another paper shape. Sorry, I want this to dry. Oh, pom-poms would be cute. Um, we're actually going to use a glue gun for that part. So this, I'm just going to let it sit for a little bit. Um, so, okay, so we have our button, and we have our little dowel here. And then once again, while this is drying for just a couple of seconds, I'll remind everyone that everything that we're showing, the color burst, the watercolor paper, all the way to the buttons, yes. um, the lawn fawn, heart dies with the stitching, it's all on blitzy.com. The first comment on this broadcast is actually the link to that blog post. Really get a little overview. The replay of this will also be there. So it's kind of one spot for everything that you need for this project. Yes. Obviously, if you ever have questions, we're here to answer them, but we're trying to make it so that when you're going to check something out on our blog, everything that you need is right there. So um, definitely check out the post. So now I have my button here, and just going to use some a little bit of hot glue. Tina says, hi, ladies. We love you. We love you, too. <laughs> we love you, too. Thanks for tuning in. Okay. So you just put your, that little, is so cute. Just put your little button in there, and then just a little hot glue on the stem, put your dowel in place. Oh, that's a good idea. Lori said she'd brush a little bit of the liquid metals oh. to give, the, give some shimmer on yes. the leaves there, which if you're not familiar, liquid metals. Oh, I, I think we, have, we actually have some down here. Oh, we'll show you what liquid <laughs> metals are. It's, it pairs really, really nicely with your color bursts and can go over the top as and create like a shimmery effect. So, so here, good idea, Lori. Here is, um, well, first of all, that pretty much wraps up the little project. Yeah, and um, then you can kind of see, I'll do a front view. So you would just do a bunch of those and then we put them in a mason jar and just kind of yeah. dress the mason yeah. jar up a little. There's just some rocks in there. and just a little festive yeah. thing. But they could also be cute um, in drinks. Yes. And green beer. <laughs> that <laughs> would know, be really for, cute. For um, but here, I will show you 
um, what the liquid metals look like. So this is actually, that's why it's called liquid metals, because this is actually kind of like color burst, but it's already activated with um, like a shiny, sparkly uh, pigment in there. So you want to shake it up just to mix it up a little. And it's very pearlescent and shimmery. So you can see. I hope it'll show on the camera. Yeah, let's see if I have. Do I have? You know, the sun keeps going in and out. In so and out here, I out, know. I'm sorry. What are I'm you looking, looking for? A uh, paintbrush or something. I have a dauber here. Let's see if this works. Okay. So you just kind of. You could obviously use a paintbrush, but. We use what we have, right? We use what we have. We use what we've got here. <laughs> Um, and you can just see how it adds. There's a shimmer a to it. Shimmer. It's so pretty. And you can just do it as like an accent, like Lori said, mm -hmm. on the tips here, which would be really cool. Or you could kind of splatter it on there. Mm -hmm. Or you can do it all over. Just again, there's no wrong way to right. do it. That's <laughs> what makes these products so fun is that you can just experiment and every time it'll look different and every time it will look good. So, so yeah. And Ken always likes to use, um, Irish shish kebabs. <laughs> <laughs> I love Ken's comments, yes. comments on that. Um, Ken loves to add this to his projects um, at the end as well because it kind of just adds that little extra something. So shimmery shamrock. There's shimmery another Ken shamrock. comment. Yeah. <laughs> we love Ken. Love it. <laughs> so that is the project for today. We wanted to get you guys in the St. Patrick's Day mood. It is National Craft Month, so you should craft something, yes, even craft if it's something. not this. You should get crafty. And again, everything is linked. The first comment on this post. Make sure you check out the blog post. Leave us any questions. We'll be paying attention, and we will answer them in the comments. So thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next week. Same time, same place, New different product. topic. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, thanks, guys. Have a Bye. great one. Bye.